Okay, I haven't done a stamp along in quite some time, and I thought I would do it with these very simple mirror card uh, constructions here. All right, what you're going to need is a half page piece of um, black cardstock. You can use really any colored cardstock, but just having the black in between these two different sections here tends to cut down the contrast between um, these two sections if you do have some space in here and something a little bit darker probably works the best. If you want to use a white piece of paper though maybe what you can do is you can draw kind of a black line down um, the inner portion of it where we're going to have that fold so that um, the two connecting portions of these two pieces will be obscured if you do have some space in there. And that way you can go with uh, you know, a white card on the outside. If you want to do some sort of uh, traditional stamping of uh, kind of some white card stock. Okay, so on this half page piece, I don't really take the time to score my cards. If it was a larger piece then maybe. But I'm just taking this and folding it over. I just use my simple fingernail trick right here just score it like that and then we have our folded card like so. And the one thing you can do to kind of expedite things is to um, adhere your uh, bottom interior lower piece um, right in there. As I don't do too much on this bottom portion, I usually just stamp out some pretty simple pieces. Now what I do is I fold this over to get this right butted up right in that area right in there, okay? And then I just line it up like so, lay it down, and then I just take this, and fold it in like that, get it burnished down, and then you have your bottom portion like that. Now, you could adhere this top portion and then just stamp like this, but I tend to think that it's better to have this portion kind of left um, alone and then when we get this stamped out to adhere it in here because there's certain things that we might do on here um, that might require this be separate. I don't know if it's required but it just makes things a little bit easier okay so you can get that going right there and uh, let's see we'll get ready for you on the next step. Okay on this card, we're going to be using set number six, nature set number six, that's based around the lakeside cabin. Then we'll use the pine tree here. I use a little bit of the pine row as well. I guess we can go for a little bit of the water uh, texture if we want to, or we can incorporate more elements in there. Maybe we'll do a little bit more on here just to uh, get things a little bit more, I don't know, complete in this card. All right, so I'm going to mount this up and the ink that we're going to be using is stays on black, okay? That's going to be used for the majority of this piece. Um, I think that's the only one we might be using. We might get into a little bit of the brilliance too if you want to. I'll do mine and then you can see if you want to do yours, okay? All right, so brilliance black, I mean uh, stays on black, I should say. Stays on is going to be the type of ink that will dry on a non-porous surface such as foils, okay? All right, so I'm going to try to stamp this. Now, this is the horizon line right on here. It's where this little point comes out, okay? I'm going to look for that on my card, okay? And that's what I'm going to be going for. I'm not going to be going for it up here, okay? Because the point, the horizon line is going to be represented by this connection point, these two meeting points right here. So you want to get that right on that horizon right there. I don't know if it's the horizon, but it's on the water line there. Okay, so you can get it like that. If you're not exactly, you know, matching up with that little point, don't worry about it, okay? Get a good impression of this. I stand up when I'm stamping my larger stamps, okay? Stays on it. You don't want to hold it down too long like I just did. It almost really stuck really hard. Okay, so that is going to go right in here, okay? Now we could have that as our um, impression alone, but I'm going to show you something that I think is really fun to do, and it's something that I've done that's a little bit of refinement on these cards. Okay, now I'm going to take this same stamp right here 
And I'm going to just ink up this cabin portion like that, okay? And I'll show you why I'm just doing the cabin, okay? And then we're going to stamp this on some white cardstock here, okay? Make sure, just make sure you get the whole cabin on there. Okay. Now, like I said, that cabin portion is the only part that's going to matter. What we're going to do is we're going to color that in, and then we're going to just glue it right down on that surface right there, okay? All right. I'm going to allow that to dry for a little bit, and let's get to a couple other impressions. Let's go for the pine row here. Let me find a block that's going to fit. This one's a little bit too big, ideally, but we can use it here. All right, so we have these spaces around this lakeside cabin, and I think I want to make that a little bit more complete by going out to the outside edges. I ink that whole thing up, and one of the things that I show people in my first classes is that what you do, just to um, kind of vary the impression quality a little bit. I'm drying this ink down at the base and I'm drying it a little bit more here. The top portion is very wet. Now the stays on ink dries pretty fast so you have to do that pretty quickly, okay? And we'll go like that and it just transitions a little bit lighter down here, okay, where it's overlapping that, okay? And we'll do that the same way on the other side, okay? So I'm inking that in. Okay, wiping off the bottom portion like this, okay, so it's a little bit more wiping and then a less wiping up there and don't wipe off the top, okay, and then we'll go in here, and go out to the side, and we'll go like that, and it's a little bit lighter down here, I'm going to put a little bit of mist down here at the base, I think with some white pigment ink um, in the end, okay, all right. Now, this portion right here should be pretty dry. Let's give it a check, okay? Uh, stays on ink, dries very quickly, okay? Now, I have some colored pencils, okay? You can color these in with your uh, dye-based markers or something like that, La plumes or Tombows, something like that. Or, you know, you can also just stamp this out in a dye-based ink and color it with an alcohol ink, too, you know? Just make sure it's compatible. If you try to color um, uh, the stays on with an alcohol ink, it, it'll probably put it back into solution and smear it quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going in here and coloring, and I'm going to leave those windows um, not colored, so it, it will look like a bit like interior lighting um, within that cabin area, okay? Now on top, I am going to put a little of this brown, okay, but I want to have the top portion of the roof pretty light, okay? And that's so that it looks like the lighting is coming from above. But, you know, you can get a little bit of color in there just so it's not just straight white, okay? I'll go like that. We'll just keep this really simple. I'll just do a quick coloring like that, all right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosely cut this out, all right? Like so, don't bother cutting the trees. The trees are already on the impression on the foil, okay? So it'll look like that, all right? And then what I'll do is I'll just cut this bottom portion. I think I'll leave some of the rocks on this as well, like, like about like so, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll adhere this to our cabin right here. And let's see, here's my little uh, crafter's tape runner. Just put a little bit of strip like that on there. And then we'll take this. Now see right now, I mean like I said, you could just leave that as is and just go with that. Or you could put a little white pigment ink up there or something like that. But I just tend to think that looks a little bit more dimensional on paper like this, okay? You don't have the um, it, uh, the rainbow holographic aspect of the paper showing right through the cabin, okay? So you get that instead, and this is what it looks like reflected down in that water. See how it kind of stands out a little bit more? 
Now that's the difference between just doing that little simple application and then plus you can also color the cap in whatever you want. It doesn't have to be you know rainbow holographic or just white or something like that okay. All right so let's see down here let's see how much space we have down here. Um, I might do something too that looks pretty good to me I think. I might do something with this um, ledge stamp right here. I think that looks pretty good. So on the ledge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat that the same way that I did the cabin, okay? So I'm going to take the ledge from nature set number six. It's also sold um, separately if you want, okay? And I'm just going to stamp this like this. All right. Let's go for a couple impressions so it goes all the way across the bottom of this card. I guess ideally I would have done it uh, on a separate piece of paper that was the same dimensions, okay? All right, so you get this ledge, and see that ledge will reach all the way across um, this card right here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just mark it off right here, like about like so. I will mark it off like this and this, all right? So I know that where um, to cut this ledge stamp right here, okay? So the ledge is done on this piece of paper. And let's do some additional coloring on there, okay? I'm thinking about making this into like a piece of granite or something like that. So um, let's go with a little bit of grays on here. And again, I'm just using a colored pencil. Color however way you want to, you know, whatever ways you're used to coloring, just use the same media. You don't have to use what I'm using here. If you want to use a, you know, a glossy cardstock, you can use that. If you want to use something else, go ahead and use that. But this is just coloring right here, okay? All right like this. I'm leaving some areas of ledge light so that, you know, it looks like lighting is hitting it, okay? We have ver a varied surface, okay? And I'll lay down some browns on here. This is kind of a, a fairly warm tone scene right there with that uh, golden um, surface down there on the, uh, the water's uh, surface, the lake's surface. All right, so there's a lot of dynamic, um, uh, I don't know, n n nature with um, the rainbow holographic paper that we're working with. Gold is really dynamic, but even like a gold card sock like that, as dynamic as that is, it's really, I don't know, kind of subservient to the um, the rainbow holographic with all those colors in there. So um, that being said, you don't have to spend too much time on this type of coloring right here um, because of the nature of this construction. People aren't going to be looking at this rock too much, okay? I mean, but that being said, that coloring that I just did right there, I don't know what it takes, like a couple minutes or something like that. All right, so go like that. Cut off the edge like that. And that's going to be our foreground rock down here, like about like so, okay? All right, now I want to use some trees on here. So I'm going to put some trees on both sides of this rock, okay? But we can't stamp over the top of the rock and have it go straight into this foil. So we're going to remove this and we're going to stamp our pine tree, okay, like that. Let's grab our stays on ink. I think I'll go for three impressions of this, okay. I don't want to have this right down the center like this, okay? This is going to be kind of framing our scene, our bottom portion of the scene, okay? 
So go with one like this. Be careful when you're stamping into kind of a slippery foil. It's easy to kind of skew, you know, this image when you're stamping it down. So just when you get it down there, just kind of be mindful of when your stamp is going to um, touch the surface, touch the surface, give it a good impression like that, and just release like so. Don't go lightly or anything like that. You still want, you know, your ink to transfer, you know, sufficiently. Okay. Go like this. And let's take a look at this and see how this is looking right here. If you want to go for another impression of it, you can. Maybe I'll go for, oh, like a couple lower um, Impressions. I'm kind of overlapping my previous impression over here. Okay. And how about three? I usually do things in kind of odd numbers like that. All right. Now we have this lower uh, section right here. Let's take a look and see what it's going to be looking like with this top portion adhered to it like so. Okay. Like see like that. And let's go ahead and apply this ledge to the scene. Let's go with our crafter's tape. This cartridge kind of got loaded funny. Oh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, let me just roll it like that. Oh, or am I out? Oh, let's just go ahead and hear this here. Okay. Like that. Go across like so. All right, and then we have our lower section, okay? It's fairly light in comparison to that foil. So what we're going to do is let's just darken this in a little bit, okay? Let's create um, some shadows coming from those trees, okay? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to meow, kind of match it up tonally a little bit. Um, it's not going to match up completely because you know, colored pencils and uh, the, you know, the foil are pretty different, but from a darkness standpoint, we can get it pretty close. Okay, so see these trees right here kind of casting their shadows on these rocks over here, and these rocks over here getting um, shadowed, sh uh, shaded by the trees right there. So, go like that. Okay. And I like to add in a little bit of shading, like a vignette, down in this lower section here. So I'll add a little bit more tone, like so. Okay, now let's take a look at it again. Okay, there's our foreground like that. Look how dimensional this is looking. Okay, now let's take a look up here. Let's, why don't we add um, some additional tones in here. I want to make that um, interior lighting of the cabin a little bit more prominent. I'll put a little bit of shading down here in these rocks. Okay, Colored pencil doesn't really adhere really well, but it does a little bit to the uh, foil. All right. Okay, now I mentioned one of the things that I like doing is I like adding a little bit more dimension with um, some additional tones. So down here I like to put a little bit of this kind of rising mist. So this is something that you can do or you don't have to do. And there's also a lot of um, kind of open area up top. Now this is perfect for um, like a quote stamp or something like that. A lot of times I don't like to have like a quote up here reflecting kind of upside down in this lower section though. But having something like way up here, see, you don't see my finger reflecting in that foil down there, but see, when you get to about right here, if I had a quote right here, it would show up. So you can put anything up here, like, uh, you know, wish you were here or something like that, and that's really fun. <laughs> or, 
happy birthday or something like that or you know you you light up my life what would be a good quote for this um, foil here just about uh, you can play around with anything like that okay so here's the thing if you want to put a little bit of this mist down here or something like that use a brilliant sink okay um, the stays on ink is really great for the impressions, okay? But you can't blend that around, all right? Brilliance inks, black and white's all you need um, for this use, okay? But see, I'm taking this and I'm putting it on 100% um, cotton ball, 100% uh, cotton cotton ball, I should say. And we're adding a little bit of mist down here, like it's a little bit of a fog or something like that. See how it's going across those trees. Now I gave this a, a, a big head start um, by wiping off some of the uh, the ink before making the impression. Okay, maybe on this one I wiped off a little bit too much, but we'll just say that's kind of in a little bit more of this cloudy kind of mist or fog coming off the lake. Okay, add it right down here. See I'm adding it right over the top of the cabin too. And if you put on a little bit too much just wipe it off. Okay. So adding that down like about like so. Okay. And that is the white brilliancy. Now, for up here, one of the things that I tried the other day that I thought looked really good um, was to add some tone up into the sky. Now this is the part where Nothing else really requires a lot of technique on here. It's mostly just stamping, it's cutting out, it's coloring with colored pencils, okay? But doing this brilliant sink up here is the thing that takes a little bit of technique, okay? But anyone can do it. It's just that when people do it for the first time, they're going to think, oh my god, this is hard. But what this is, it's a matter of applying, removing, applying, removing, applying. So don't get shocked like, oh my god, this is like so hard to do, because it's not, you know, um, the first application of this that you're supposed to be going for. That's what we're all kind of used to in rubber stamping. Okay, so see that right there? It's real smudgy and dark like that, okay? Which, you know, I mean, could look pretty cool. But see this right here? I'm just kind of dragging it in like so, okay? And getting that smudgy look. It's almost like you're taking shoe polish onto it, okay? Now that doesn't look good, okay? But that's not what you're going to be left with here, okay? So just taking it on, going for a little bit of variation here. You're kind of, you know, adding some, make it real streaky and, you know, see how blobby it is right there? And then just take a clean part of your um, cotton ball, go into that. Okay, now here's the real fun part too. What you do is you take a clean part of your uh, cotton ball and then you're going to come in here and you're going to kind of wipe off, you see what I mean, from the inside out. So keep kind of changing your cotton ball, you know, around a little bit like that. Now look at how that really starts to come about. So you're wiping off that from the interior out. So when you're wiping the darkness, you're going from the outside in. And when you're doing this kind of uh, lighter area, you know, we are wiping that off and you're coming to it into it from the inside out and look at that variation right there. If you don't like some of it, then just wipe more of it off or wipe it off with a paper towel or something like that. See that right there? It's such a little smudgy because you know I'm using the same cotton ball. Let's switch cotton balls right here. You know, you can switch to a clean one, you can do it with a you can rub with your finger if you want to, whatever you want. Okay. But just keep switching off to a clean part of a cotton ball. See, I'm kind of rotating this as I go around. And it's like you're kind of, you're whisking it off the page like that. You're really not. It's kind of just coming off. But that's kind of the movement that you're using. And look how much more natural that looks. But look at this little texture. Okay, now this is going to have to be um, kind of spray sealed because it'll kind of rub off, you know, um, even when dry. So give it a little bit of a spray sealant. Um, with an acrylic spray like a Kryolan or something like that. But look at this little smudgy little kind of atmosphere in your sky. You can do it in wisps up this way if you want to, like it's like a, I don't know, a cloud or something like that. I think I like that. I'm going to add a little bit more. It's, you know, every one of these that you do are probably going to come out a little bit different um, 
than the other one, just because of the variation of this kind of streaking that you do. Okay, let's take that, go in here, and a little off. See, I have some going right through my trees down here. But look at that atmosphere now. But look at this, how it looks in the light like this now. And let's take a look at what it looks like on our piece like that. Look at that. Look at that. It's up here, it looks like a, like a rainbow almost, like that. You tilt that around, and you can adjust it. It's like if you have too much black on there. So see, the black is kind of mellowing it out in some areas like that. But take a look at how it looks down here in the reflection. There, you'd go like that, and it's almost northern lights, right? It's like nighttime, you know, where you have it kind of closed off like that. So it's like day and night almost. I don't know, it looks different every time. Okay, so let's see here. Let's take this and let's go ahead and adhere this. Now watch out for your smudgies on there. Now remember, if you get it smudgy and if you kind of adhere it and something happens, um, then, uh, you know, just adjust accordingly. Okay, and let's get this taped up here like so. I go for the um, perimeter and then I do this X right through it like that. Okay, and then what you do is you just kind of go like this, do it the opposite way, hold this up like this, and just take this and run it right down to that connection point. If you have a little bit of space, it's a little bit better, but um, I don't know, just going all the way down is going to be fine. Then you can just adjust. Okay, now be careful about this portion. Just take it like this, and then you can adhere it down like so with whatever you're using. And then we have our card like this, okay? And like I said, a quote up here or something like this, or a quote down here in the water looks excellent. I'm going to go and take a look and see if I have um, some little figure or something like that that I want to put down here in the water. I think I have a good idea. And maybe a quote stamp up here would be really good. Okay, I think I have a good quote here. In the woods we return to reason and faith and... Uh, I thought this uh, canoe and fly line would really go really well in this uh, water area right in here. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, so I'm going to do this again in the stays on black. Okay, I think I'm going to use stays on black for both. A lot of times I, when I do my quote stamps, I do it in white in the water. I love the way that um, it looks like it's floating on the surface, you know, text like that. It's like a movie credits or something like that um, when they have these kind of texts that are kind of floating, you know, in the uh, the credits for the movie in the beginning or something like that. That's what it reminds me of. Okay, I'm wiping off the edges a little bit just so that those ripples kind of transition a little bit around on the side. And it'll go about like so. This kind of gives the lower portion a little bit of a focal point. Okay, so we have our little canoeist like that, little fisherman like that, and look at that. Isn't it like a fisherman's dream? <laughs> uh, my dad was a big time fisherman. More ocean than uh, salt water than fresh water. But we did, you know, a little bit of fresh water fishing um, up in the Sierras. But, uh, Not really too much of a freshwater guy. If you if we lived somewhere where there was a lot of bass or something like that, or you know, something like that, and away from uh, uh, the ocean, I'm sure he would have been into that too. Okay, so let's see right here. I'm going to put this. I think I'm going to put this a little bit off center. And over here, forgive my head, big head in the way here. I don't know if I just put that straight or not, but go like that. And not too bad. 
pretty straight there. <laughs> okay, so this is the card like this, but look at this card. Look at those colors up there like that. Isn't that really cool? I might have added a little bit too much white down here. Let me see. I'm going to kind of blot that off a touch. Okay, like about like that. There still might be a little bit. <laughs> I, I think I missed that bottom portion down there. Let me do a little bit of a refinement down there. Okay. I'm just going to take my tree stamp again like this, and I'll hit some more uh, pine structure down in that lower section. Okay. I'm just stamping in, uh, inking up this little lower portion of the uh, pines. I'm going to take a piece of paper to block off this area like so. And then I'm just going to take this and I will stamp these trees right over the top of it and get some, you know, kind of an another layer of some uh, pine trees down there. Yeah, okay, that took a little bit too much time. I'm not used to using stays on. So on the time that I, uh, you know, went and uh, got this piece of paper and figured it out, it was already dry on my uh, stamp uh, right here. So let's go like this and let's hit it again. Okay, I'm stamping it into that white, so I hope it adheres down there. Yeah, that adhered okay. You gotta work, work fast with that stays on. I'm not someone that's like a super fast stamper either. In fact, I'm rather kind of methodical, so I don't know, it takes me a while to, you know, I take, I do everything kind of, you know, timely or something. Okay, so anyways, there's my card like that, okay? I'd say that's a pretty fast, uh, you know, application of a pretty dynamic card like that, okay? Like I said, this is like wide open and, you know, I'm holding this up to my camera, but, you know, this is how it can also look. You know, if someone was to look at this card, they would open it up like this, okay? You'd have something on the outside, put your greeting or something like that, you know, happy birthday or something like that, you know, or happy Father's Day, you know what I mean? Uh, and then they open it up, but look at that color down there that they'd see kind of initially, and then they're opened up and look at that change. And then they open it up like this and, you know, you look at these trees down here and look at that movement across there and look how dynamic that is. But this is a pretty easy card. I hope, you know, people would realize that. Like I said, I mean, this little cutout down there, the only thing that took a little bit of technique was streaking that little tone in there. But this area down here, what is this? This is just impressions of black directly on this. This is stamping this out on a piece of cardstock and coloring it in. I could have had this black, you know, this image down here directly on the cardstock, but the gold would be showing right through it like that. So, you know, it's just a matter of if you'd want that. Uh, here, I'm going to do a little something here too. I'm going to put a little bit more of this black ink. Uh, let me see if I can get this little um, ledge toned in a little bit more here. I'm just doing this in the brilliance. Now the brilliance on top of the white cardstock, you do not have to um, spray seal because the cardstock is, you know, the white cardstock is very porous, so this will dry on there just fine. Uh, you can use anything. You can use any uh, color. You can use dye basting, so, uh, you know, for this. Uh, um, shading here. You can use um, any type of, uh, you know, color box, pigment ink, whatever you want, okay? Okay, so just anchoring that down a little bit more. Let's go about like that. Maybe they'll match, and I just, I, th I thought it would match up a little bit more like that, okay? See that right there? Let's take a look at it again. And there's that quote. See that quote stamp up there? And it looks really good up there. And it's not reflecting upside down down in the water because that portion of, 
would be down here somewhere. So see that? You can have those quote stamps in there and it can really work out really well, but look at that beautiful kind of northern light type of thing. Anyways, this is fun stuff, really dynamic, and uh, I think a pretty simple type of card, but certainly not simple in the end result looking, you know. It ra looks rather complex, you know, if anything, but look at that. Okay, anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and hope you stamp along with me in this stamp along video.